Building data workflows requires iteration. You typically start in a local development environment using your favorite code editor and a command line interface. You write your data pipeline and configure all your tasks and dependencies. Then you run it locally and you validate that your code is working as intended and your data looks good. But how do you move that project to production? How can you ensure that your change or new project won't affect anything else? The production environment should remain stable and secure. It's considered best practice to have a clear separation between development and production workflows. You may have two entirely separate instances, servers or clusters for development and production environments. And there are many great tools that facilitate moving from development to production at ease, such as Terraform and GitHub Actions. For now, we'll focus on two tools, Terraform and Kestra. Terraform is an infrastructure as code tool to declaratively manage environments and the underlying cloud infrastructure. And Kestra is an orchestrator to manage data workflows. Both tools use declarative configuration, and when used together, they provide a great foundation to manage data engineering lifecycle. But first, what is Kestra? Kestra is a simple event-driven data orchestrator focused on fast development cycles. For an introduction to Kestra, check the Getting Started video linked below. Before diving into details, let's discuss best practice recommendations to manage environments in any workflow orchestrator and the trade-offs you need to consider. It's generally recommended to have a dedicated development instance shared with other team members. Everyone who benefits from the work of a data team should be able to collaborate and contribute to the process of developing data workflows. And this includes business users. But who should write ETL? Should this be engineers or business users or everyone? Or perhaps in the near future, only AI will write data pipelines? I don't have answers, but I can offer suggestions. There is a great blog post from Jeff Magnuson where he claimed that engineers shouldn't write ETL. Business users are the ones who ask questions that need to be answered with data. So excluding them from the process of building data workflows introduces friction and leaves everyone disappointed. That's why many organizations introduce drag and drop tools to allow business users to build their own data workflows entirely without involvement of engineers. And that's also how no code solutions were born. But as with anything in engineering, there are many trade-offs to consider. And you need to consider them based on your specific use case, the structure of your organization, and the problems you need to solve. Many people in the industry will pitch you one specific solution as the best one, but it's not that simple. Because on the other extreme, you could build everything yourself. You would have only engineers writing custom pipelines. Business users would only give requirements and provide feedback on the result. The danger here, though, is that you end up with a lot of back and forth communication. The business stakeholder has just one more requirement, and then one more, and then only one more adjustment. Upon each request, the engineer keeps rewriting and redeploying their data pipelines. In the end, you may end up in a situation where everyone is frustrated. The engineer is frustrated by the slow development cycles and communication overhead. And the business user feels disempowered because they rely on that engineer for everything. To make the situation less painful, Kestra tries to find a balance between the two extremes. You set up a development instance where everyone who benefits from data work, including business users, can collaborate and iterate quickly by developing workflows directly from the UI. Using simple declarative configuration in code, your data team and business stakeholders can build their own workflows or only participate in the workflow development, adjusting task properties and enhancing the workflow documentation. The UI has an embedded code editor and documentation and provides additional features which are particularly helpful in the development phase, including auto-completion, versioning, and topology view of your workflow dependencies. We've covered the development phase, but what about the production environment? You typically would want to have a read-only access in your production instance so that changes, additions, and deletions are made only after approval for example, by opening a pull request or approving a Terraform cloud run. In order to accomplish a stable, maintainable, and reproducible environment, you want that all production resources get deployed only from Terraform. This way you can accomplish the best balance of fast feedback loops during development, 
but also leveraging the benefits of infrastructure as code for production environments. The typical workflow of moving to production starts with a pull request. Once approved, the changes get deployed to production instance by Terraform. The next video will provide a hands-on demo of how we can bring infrastructure as code best practices to your data pipelines using Terraform and Kestra. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.